Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black affinity deck built around Tazeret, Master of the Bridge, which was the bio box promo from War of the Spark, 6 mana Planeswalker that starts out at 5 loyalty and has a static ability saying creature and Planeswalker spells we cast have affinity for artifacts, meaning they cost 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control, which in this deck can very quickly lead to Planeswalkers and creatures being cast for free, since we've got a number of colorless Planeswalkers and creatures we can search up, and that can lead to some interesting combos. And the main combo comes with Karn the Great Creator, 4 mana Planeswalker starts out at 5 loyalty, and the ability we care about the most here is the minus 2 ability, which lets us search up an artifact card from our sideboard and put it into our hand, and the artifact we're going to be searching up out of the sideboard to enable all these combo shenanigans is Guardians of Koilos, 5 mana for a 4-4 artifact creature, and when it enters the battlefield we can return another target historic permanent we control to its owner's hand, historic permanents including artifacts, planeswalkers, sagas and legendaries, just artifacts and planeswalkers are relevant in this deck. So imagine having 5 artifacts in play, we play Tazeret Master of the Bridge, then thanks to Affinity we get to cast Karn the Great Creator for 0 mana, we get to use the minus 2 ability, search up a Guardians of Koilos, which will also cost 0 mana since it's a creature and we have 5 artifacts in play, we play Guardians of Koilos, and then when it enters the battlefield we can return Karn the Great Creator that we just minus 2'd back to our hands, recast it for free, minus 2 again, search up a second copy of Guardians of Koilos since we've got 4 in the sideboard, and then repeat this process until we've got 4 copies of Guardians of Koilos in play, and then we still have Karn the Great Creator that we can minus 2, maybe searching up a copy of Meteor Golem, which by now we can also cast for free since we've got 4 additional artifacts in play, so we can cast a free Meteor Golem, destroy one of the opponent's permanents, and uh, carry on with our day while having 4 Guardians of Koilos in play. And then the plus 2 ability on Tesseret will also deal additional damage since we've got more artifacts in play now. And ideally at the same time we also have a Sahili in play, which says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to make a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token. So whenever we replay Karn, we get to make an additional artifact, which will again make all our things cheaper with affinity, and will also deal more damage with Tesseret's plus 2 ability. So that's kind of the board state we're trying to get to, but of course Karn gives us an entire toolbox of artifacts to get out of the sideboard, which we will get to in a second. So let's take a look at our entire decklist, starting out with our 2-drops, where we've got 4 copies of Tyrant Scorn, which can destroy target creature with convert mana cost 3 or less, or return target creature to its owner's hand for 2 mana at instant speed. We've got 4 copies of Guild Globe, which is an artifact that when it enters the battlefield it draws a card, and we can also sacrifice it to fix our mana, to maybe make it easier to cast our double blue or double black spells, but mostly it's just an artifact that helps us out with our different artifact synergies, and counts towards affinity for Tesseret. And then we also have 4 copies of Treasure Map, which is very important in this deck, allowing us to scry one multiple times, improving our draw step, and eventually transforming into Treasure Cove, also generating 3 artifact treasure tokens that we can sacrifice for mana, or sacrifice to the Treasure Cove to draw cards, but most importantly, it generates 3 artifacts that count towards Tezzeret's affinity ability, allowing us to play our Planeswalkers and creatures on the cheap, then at 3 mana we've got the full play set of Narset, Parter of Veils, which has a static ability that can be pretty relevant against opposing blue decks, saying each opponent can draw more than one card each turn, and then the minus 2 ability lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, we can reveal a non-creature, non-land card from it, and then put it into our hand, so this also helps us search up the different combo pieces like Karn the Great Creator or Tezzeret, and we can activate it two times if it's not pressured by any creatures, and still stay in play at one loyalty. Then we've got two copies of Obnixil's Cruelty as a nice removal spell, giving target creature minus five, minus five until end of turn, and if that creature would die it also gets exiled, so perfect answer to recursive creatures like Arclight Phoenix or Rekindling Phoenix, and it's a bit cheaper than Vraska's Contempt, which is of course a bit more versatile, also being able to deal with Planeswalkers, but I wanted a slightly cheaper removal spell, since we already have so many cards at 4 mana, that we'll get to in a second. And then we also have the full playset of Sahili, which can also generate a bunch of artifact tokens that will help us out with our different artifact synergies, and the minus 2 can also come in handy if we want to maybe copy a Karnstruct token from Karn's minus 2 ability, and get in a ton of damage. 
Then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Ritual of Soot as our sweeper of choice, destroying all creatures with convert mana cost 3 or less. And I prefer this over the 3 mana sweepers nowadays because of the presence of the Wild Growth Walker Explore package in a lot of the green decks, and there the minus 2 minus 2 effects often aren't enough to kill everything. Then we've got two copies of Karn Sinoversa, which is also quite synergistic in our deck. The plus one and minus one abilities provide a bit of card advantage. And then the minus two ability makes an artifact creature token with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts we control. So that can very quickly get out of hand with the transformed treasure map making artifact tokens, Sahili making servos, and then the Karn the Great Creator plus Tesseract combo also searching up additional artifacts. And then we've got four copies of Karn the Great Creator that can search up all sorts of artifacts out of the sideboard. And to help us combo with Tazeret, we've got three copies of Tazeret, the plus two being our main win condition, and the minus three can also return any artifacts that might have died that we got with Karn the Great Creator. And then we also have a single copy of Ugin, which is pretty synergistic in our deck, making colorless spells we cast cost two generic mana less to cast, so that means our guild globes and treasure maps are free, and Karns only cost two mana, and also it gives a nice discount to any artifacts we might search up with Karn the Great Creator. And then the plus one makes a 2-2 token, that when it dies, makes that card go to our hand, and the minus three can destroy any permanent that's one or more colors, so it can also help us deal with opposing planeswalkers. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 26 lands, since we really can't afford to miss any land drops in this deck, and that includes 4 islands, 6 swamps, 2 Dimir Guildgate, so we've got 2 additional dual lands in this deck, since we've got some double blue, double black requirements that we don't want to miss out on. We've got the 4 Catacombs and 4 Water Graves that we're accustomed to, as well as 4 copies of Interplanar Beacon, which can gain us quite a bit of life with all the Planeswalkers we have in the main deck, while still helping us cast our double blue cards on turn 3. And then we also have a single Karn's Bastion as one of our value lands that helps us proliferate, so we can maybe get an additional activation out of our Narsand or Karn the Great Creator. And then also one copy of Mobilized District, which is a land that can turn into a 3-3 creature with Vigilance and cause less mana to activate if we've got multiple Planeswalkers in play. There are some other lands we could consider, like Field of Ruin to deal with opposing non-basic lands and Blast Zone as another pretty versatile land but we went with District and Bastion instead. If we do play Field of Rune or Blast Zone in the main deck, we can consider adding a Crucible of Worlds in the sideboard to search up with Karn the Great Creator as a nice artifact to recur those lands from the graveyard. As it is, we don't need a Crucible since we don't have Field of Rune or Blast Zone. And even though this deck is built for Best of One, we do have a 15 card sideboard because of Karn, including two copies of Navigator's Compass against the Mono Red decks, when we need to gain some life right away. I prefer this over Fountain, which is a little bit too slow against the Mono Red decks. We've got a Silent Gravestone, which shines against the Commander Dreadhorde decks, shutting down Commander Dreadhorde and Tamiyo. We've got two copies of Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down opposing planeswalkers. Then we've got one copy of Transmogrifying Wand, which is a pretty interesting card. We can transform up to three creatures into two four tokens, so we can upgrade our own one one tokens into two fours, and we can downgrade opposing creatures into two fours as well. And thanks to our Karn's Bastion, we can proliferate onto the wand so we can activate it additional times. And once we turn the opposing creatures into 2-4 tokens, we can more easily manage them with maybe a Ritual of Soot, destroying creatures with converted mana cost 3 or less, which will also destroy all tokens, or maybe a Tyrant Scorn, which can also bounce or destroy the tokens, so we can more easily manage them. Then we also have the full 4 copies of Guardians of Koilos to combo with Karn the Great Creator and Tezzeret. We've got one copy of Bolasa Citadel, which is great in the more grindy control matchups, where the opponent isn't pressuring our life total, and this can turn into a very powerful card draw engine, especially considering we've got the four copies of Beacon gaining us additional life whenever we find a Planeswalker, and also has great synergy with Treasure Map, allowing us to scry lands to the bottom. We've got Narset, which also lets us remove the top cards of our library, and Karn can help there as well. So if we can find a Bolasa Citadel in the right matchup, it can be quite devastating. Then we also have a copy of Immortal Sun. If we're facing Planeswalker decks and we're kind of desperate to find an answer for multiple Planeswalkers at once, we can always go for Immortal Sun, which will also shut down our own Planeswalkers, but then we can try and win the game some other way. And finally, three copies of Meteor Golem, which also synergizes nicely with Tazeret, often costing zero mana after we're done looping Karn and Guardians of Koilos, and can also help us deal with various permanents, including enchantments, which otherwise we might not be able to deal with, as well as opposing Planeswalkers. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with a bit of a clunky hand with double tap land here. Now if we can find any basic land or a watery grave, then the sand is pretty good. So I think we'll keep on the draw and hope to get there. Alright, there's island, perfect. 
Facing turn 1 mountain. Turn 2 mountain. But no turn 2 plays so far. Play globe. And then next turn we can drop Sahili. Alright, throw points on Gruul, so not mono red. I've got the cruelty to answer Phoenix. And there's Phoenix. Hopefully they don't have a second one, because we don't have an answer lined up. Is there a reason to cruelty now? Yeah, probably if our opponent has a lightning strike, they could kill their own phoenix in response to get it back, so I just want to make sure we can exile it. And pass the turn. It's gonna be a Chandra. Chandra we can ignore for a couple turns at least. Does find a forest, so they get some value right away. Tyrant Scorn's pretty good, can also bounce a Phoenix for a turn to bounce some time. So we have all the combo pieces we need here, and we have Sahili also generating additional artifacts for Tesseret, so this could go pretty well for us. We've got a few options here, we could Narset and keep up Tyrant Scorn, or we could play one of our Karns. Probably want to keep the Great Creator in hand until we play Tesseret, so we don't expose it to removal. So do we want to play a Sign of Urza instead? I guess that's fine, can help us hit our land drops. Alright, that one's not gonna find us a land. Because we just want to make sure we hit our six land drop here for Tesseret. And Sinoversa often gives lands. Do we attack the token at Chandra? I guess that's okay. If they deal one damage to one of our planeswalkers, that's not the end of the world. Now you're asking for it. They could play a hasty Hellkite and then finish off Sahili after dealing one damage to it. That's the only downside of attacking Chandra here. Alright, it's gonna be Domri and Ark of Bolas. Let's see if they decide to play that one out. They do. Essentially costing two mana since it can make a mana. And a Murphy Branch Walker finds a Wild Growth Walker, that's acceptable. And another Branch Walker. Alright, hopefully we can draw land for the turn. We did not. Let's plus Karn and hope it finds a land. It does, but it's gonna be a tapped one. Alright, so a little bit punished for the Demir Guildgate here, but hopefully we can still pull off the combo next turn. And then for now, I think I like playing Globe, just put more artifacts in play. Find another Karn, which we can play for free thanks to Tezzeret. And then we could either play Narset or keep up Tyrant's Corn. I think I'm okay playing Narset. Find a globe. Alright, no attacks. I'm okay if any of the planeswalkers in play currently end up dying. Just want to make sure we can preserve our artifacts, so hopefully no chain warlers in our future. Sarkom. Alright. So now the Planeswalkers can become dragons. But again, the Planeswalkers in play don't really matter. It's a Tesseret and Karn in hand that we really want to protect. Chandra finds Vivian, more Planeswalkers. A true Planeswalker battle here. Opponent takes out Karn, sparing Sahili, so we can make more artifacts as we combo off here. Only authority that I recognize is chaos. Hmm. 
And Chandra goes to the graveyard. A Ritual of Soot could be useful to at some point. I guess we can start by minusing Narsets. We already have Sahili, so we'll take Treasure Map. Alright, it's time to Wombo Combo here. Play Tesseret. Play a free Karn. Find Guardians. Play free Guardians. If instead of Sahili we had a Psy Master Thopterist, we could make infinite Thopters by using Guardians targeting Guardians, and then play infinite number of Guardians. But Sahili is a bit more synergistic in the rest of our deck since it also triggers off Planeswalkers. Alright, so what are we doing with this final Guardians? Probably just getting a Meteor Golem by bouncing Karn once again. So let's get our Golem, can take out Sarkon, can play Karn Sinoversa, make a Karnstruct, and it's time for the Laser Beam. 19 damage, attack with everyone at our opponents, and that should be just enough here. One unblocked attacker. And our opponent's dead. I bet they did not expect to die from 20 life. Alright, sweet. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand if we can hit some land drops. But I uh, gotta trust that we do. I'll lead with our guild gates. Facing turn 1 mountain, opponent might have a shock in hand. Good time to draw water grave, can play tapped. And the mono red matchup's not great, especially if they chain whirl and kill all the tokens we make from Sahili. But at least we can kill the Steamkin. And we probably have to do that now. I guess we could play Sahili first. And then if they want to spend a burn spell killing Sahili, that's fine. Otherwise we get to start making chum blockers. Alright, Pyromancer can deal two to Sahili. And we might see a shock as well here, taking out our Planeswalker. Alright, so opponent's gonna hold on to their burn spell. They could have shocked our face and then Steamkin's a 3-3 and can kill Sahili. So they're just gonna be patient on that shock. And we're gonna get to Cruelty the Steamkin. And make a token, which can trade off for the Pyromancer. If our opponent has a Chain Warlord, they could kill the token and the Planeswalker at once. And there it is. So that explains where opponents left our Planeswalker at 1. Yeah, we're gonna need a Ritual of Soot here to help us out. Don't have any great options. We could Karn the Great Crater, minus get a Compass, gain a bit of life, but we need to deal with a board instead of uh, trying to gain life in this stage. We're uh, one mana short of playing Sahili and Narsa to make a 1 1 token. So we might be better off just playing Karn and plussing. I will defend my allies. The choices we made. 
always want to make sure to plus Karn first before playing a land, since that denies a bit of information. Opponent might give us the land instead of the Planeswalker, or the Planeswalker instead of a land, based on whether or not we show them that we have the land for the turn. And if we do find one of our Watery Graves, we can play them tapped instead of having to play Bastion. Opponent is gonna respect uh, Planeswalker here. My retribution will be swift. Second Chain Whirler could be annoying. Instead it's gonna be Shock to take out Karn. So now we get to go Sahili into Narsets. And hopefully find a Ritual of Soot. Alright, no Ritual, but a Tesseret. We're a bit short on artifacts in play to combo off with Karn in hand, but it's still the pick here. So we're still at 17, this late in the game, that's a good thing. The Planeswalker has definitely absorbed a lot of damage. Karn the Great Creator can also get Meteor Golem, which is an answer to Experimental Frenzy, which otherwise could be an issue. So we'll see. Alright, Shock takes out our token. And they're gonna go after Narset first. I still have much to learn. Cease this. And maybe a lightning strike as well. Alright. Both planeswalkers down, but our opponent is down to one card in hand, which is the uh, good news here. Don't have any artifacts in the graveyard to get back with Tesseret. So the play is probably Karn. And then we could minus get Meteor Golem, which can always kill the Chain Whirler as well. And then play a treasure map as well. Seems good. Any alternatives? Yeah, I think I like getting the Golem. And if your opponent does play Frenzy next turn, we'll kill that instead. In the meantime, we should try and transform Treasure Map as soon as possible. So we get multiple artifacts in play for Tesserets, which can gain us some life back. So Chain Warlord takes out Karn. Paramancer rates us to 15. And I think we just gotta take our draw step, because if we scram with the map, we're unable to play Golem. Opponent might be sandbagging Frenzy, but uh, we kind of need to deal with the board as well. Alright, so we did draw land, so that means we still get to scry. So we'll Golem, kill Chain Whirler. If they kill the Golem, we can get it back with Tesseret. So... We'll see what happens. And I'll put a stop on my upkeep in case we need to treasure map. Alright, our last card was Lightning Strike. So if we can dodge Experimental Frenzy off the top, then we're good. <laughs> yep. Alright, so now Tesseret needs to get back Meteor Golem and hopefully the Frenzy doesn't go completely crazy. Meantime, we'll scry. And Sahili. So next turn we got a Tazeret minus. It's gonna be a two loyalty, so the Pyromancer can finish off Tazeret. I don't think Sahili does much for us. And then I guess we can scry and upkeep again. And bottom the beacon, even though it can gain a bit of life back. Ideally, we just find another Karn the Great Crater, which is another way to find Meteor Golem. Alright, Tazeret, minus. Another play we could have considered was using Karn's Bastion to proliferate, get a second counter onto Treasure Map, and then transform it right now. Don't think that would have accomplished a whole lot. 
So Tanzerat will die. We will be able to answer the frenzy, but if our opponent can find a lot of cards off the top here, we could be too far behind. Could just be dead right now. Skewer down to seven, so if they find another three damage, we're dead. Alright, well, it was an interesting game until the experimental frenzy came down. So had we camped beacon on top and gained one life, we might have been able to survive this turn cycle, but I don't think it was correct to do so. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Hopefully Gil Globe can draw us into an island, but we're playing 26 lands for a reason. And we've got Tyrant Scorn for interaction. Let's see what we're up against. Up against a tap to Godless Shrine. Alright, the beacon will help us cast Narsa next turn. Got a backup Narset. And it's gonna be a Hero Precinct 1. Now with that one I'm gonna take a turn off killing with the Tyrant Scorn since otherwise it's gonna get out of hand. Although of course there's also the risk of a Thief of Sanity hitting us instead. It's gonna be Narset. At least our Narset can still find us extra cards, since it's technically not drawing cards. And we're not missing our land drop. So we could also play Karn the Great Creator here, which I don't mind. And then maybe find a Spyglass to shut down Teferi. And then next turn if we draw land we can go Narset plus Spyglass, which is pretty efficient. If our opponent does play Thief of Sanity, we could get our Transmogrifying Wands and deal with it. And it's gonna be a Bell Haunt instead. Think I'm okay ditching an extra Narset here. Keep an open mind. Opponent finds Elder Spell. Alright, that's gonna be pretty effective. Let's minus. We could get a Guardians of Koilos and just return Karn back to our hand. We could get a wand preemptively against a Thief of Sanity. Could get a Citadel as a nice card draw engine. I think I'll go with Citadel since their opponent has Elder Spell to deal with our Planeswalkers. So let's play wands. They've got both the fairies. So I'm still gonna name Hero of Dominaria here. Because I would rather make them use small Teferi to bounce the Spyglass. And then now we can get either Sahili or Ugin. Probably go with Ugin. And then hope to draw land. I guess the argument for getting Sahili is that if our opponent uses Small Teferi to bounce Spyglass, then we could go Sahili into Spyglass, make a token. And we already have a 6 mana Planeswalker in hand with Tazeret, so getting Ugin can be pretty clunky. But it can be a nice answer to opposing threats as well, including Thief of Sanity that we're somewhat exposed to now. The fairy just pluses. So opponent can use Elder Spell at instant speed. Belhan kills Narset. And we found a land, sadly, it's our second copy of Dimir Guildgate, so the one land we did not want to draw. So we could animate Guild Globe to go after one of the opponent's creatures here, although our opponent does still have Cast Down, which can kill one of our creatures as well. I think I'm okay trading for Cast Down. And just go after Narsets. Since there's a chance our opponent wants to just keep up Elder Spell instead of playing the Cast Down. Opponent does use cast down. I'm still just gonna run out Karn here, I think. I am 
and then get an additional spine glass. It's probably the safest bet here. And then one can name the Fairy Time Raveler, and the second one can name Hero of Dominaria. And then hopefully Citadel can draw some additional cards. If we play Ugin, we can also play Spyglass for zero mana. There is always another fight. Opponent bounces with the Fairy. Was actually going to be somewhat interesting if our opponent did decide to plus the Fairy, because then our opponent could have cast Elder Spell at instant speed. So imagine we play Ugin, and then we want to use Ugin's loyalty ability before they get a chance to Elder Spell, but then if the Elder Spell we can no longer cast Spineglass for zero mana, because they decided to minus the Fairy so they could activate Hero of Donaria. We don't need to worry about an instant speed Elder Spell. Of course if our opponent has a Dovin's Veto we're in trouble, but hopefully that's not the case. So I'll just play Ugin, and then we can play double Spineglass right away. And I think we will plus with Ugin. Play Spyglass. Alright, Tyrant's Corn. Name Hero of Dominaria. And name Time Raveler. Tyrant's Corn kills our token, get our treasure map back. Now the Elder Spell will give them an additional uh, Narset activation, but that's okay. We even get to play our treasure map right away in Scry. And then treasure map plus Citadel is a nice combo. So we're not in a terrible spot here. They're gonna hold on to the Elder Spell for now. Alright, Oath of Kaya, that explains it. They can just finish off Ugin. That's okay. So end of turn we can scry with treasure map. And then hopefully Citadel delivers. We've got one beacon in play. If we can find a second one, then it's gonna be much easier to play our planeswalkers. Bottom land. So I'll just take my draw step for the turn, since I want to play a Citadel and I still have treasure map available. And I'm not gonna play the land from hand. Alright, Tyrant's Corn doesn't do a whole lot. I guess I'm fine bouncing the Bell Haunts. Find an Narset. Sadly, Cruelty comes at an awkward time, but that's okay, we can activate Narset. Probably don't want to get Saheeli when they have an Elder Spell in hand, just get the Cruelty to answer their creatures. Play a land. And then we can scry to the bottom. Find a globe. Which gets denied by Narset. Do we want to keep playing globes that don't draw cards? I think we just want to dig deeper into our deck. And put more artifacts in play for Tezzeret. Alright, Beacon's gonna be a decent draw. And we can discard the land to the Bell Haunts. And if our opponent somehow finds a way to destroy the Citadel, we could get it back with Tazeret as well. We're kind of waiting until we can find a Karn the Great Creator to combo with Tazeret Master of the Bridge. So we can just put four Guardians of Koilos in play right away. And that's going to be a bit too much for our opponent to deal with. Unless they've got a Kaya's Wrath, which they probably don't. Alright, they're going to just kill Narset while they can and use Narset themselves. That's fine. Finds another Tyrant Scorn. Alright, let's see what's on top. We'll just play the beacon that's on top. Sadly, just a land. So we'll scry that to the bottom, flip the treasure map. And hope for some more action. Right, Ritual of Soot doesn't do much. Do we want to pay for life to remove the top card of our library here? Probably not. 
We can't cruelty the bell haunt in the opponent's turn because of Teferi, but if we do it now, our opponent just gets to bounce their bell haunt with a Tarrant Scorn. So I don't know if it's really worth it. Alright, found another treasure map. I'll happily play that one. Play a land. Sahili. Now that Elder Spell is gone, we can play that one. And gain two life, so it only costs us one life to play Sahili. Scry with map. Tarrant's Corn. So do we want to bounce the Bell Haunt again? I guess that's fine. And Karn's a good one. Only costs us two life. And there's Karn the Great Creator. Now, even though we're gonna gain life from the beacons, we can't afford to pay for to play Karn in the first place. So we're probably gonna wanna play Tazeret first. Should have had an extra artifact in play here, but that's fine. Now we can play Karn. And get our Guardians. Still have a Karn Sino Versa that we can activate if we want to. Now we have to think what we want to do with the last Guardians of Koilos. We could bounce her own Tesseract, so we can activate Tesseract again this turn. That might be enough for lethal. Or we could just uh, pick up Karn the Great Creator once again, and maybe get a Meteor Golem. Yeah, I guess we're one mana short of actually replaying Tazerat here. So I'll just pick up Karn again and then get a Meteor Golem that we can cast for free. I don't think there's any way we can play around the top deck Kaya's Wrath from the opponents. So I'll just get Meteor Golem, play Meteor Golem, and we could destroy Narset, seems fine. We also have the Citadel that we can use to deal 10 to our opponents, and we could either plus or minus 2 here, let's just plus. Gives us Scorn, so if our opponent does find Kaya's Wrath we can still bounce or Meteor Golem. 
There are some pretty interesting things we could do here, like turning one of our artifacts that doesn't have summoning sickness into a creature with Karn the Great Creator's plus one ability, then making a Karn Struct token with Karn Sinoversal's minus two ability, and then using Sahili to turn the animated artifact into a Karn Struct token so it can attack as an enormous creature, but sadly your opponent has a Tyrant Scorn in hand, so they could interact with that particular combo. So I think we're good, and we're probably just gonna win next turn by plusing Tezzeret. All right, sweet. That's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.